Here's my review for Home Alone 2. Uh, this is much better than I thought movie. I saw this movie about 20 years ago when I was a kid. And I have to say that, man, this movie is a lot better than, than I thought it was. Because when I watched it the first time, I thought that, oh, man, what a... It's almost like the same analogy of, like, the Hangover movie of this era, where the Hangover 2 was exactly as the original Hangover movie. Whereas you can also argue that Home Alone 2 has the same kind of themes as the original one. But then, then again, you can argue that the Toy Story films all have the same thing, themes to it. And basically the theme is, is that it's the misfit analogy. And, and then these, these kids' films and these animation films like this, especially Christmas time, they always love the misfit analogy because it's when you're different, basically... That when you're different, you feel like you're you're ostracized by society, that people don't like you, but then all of a sudden you realize you're the special one. And basically what the misfit analogy from the first one and the second one, I guess he didn't figure it out when he was left alone at Christmas time in the first one, he needs to figure it out one more time, is that basically just because you're different from everybody else doesn't mean that you're going to miss them when they're gone. And basically that's what the movie is about. And, you know, it's, it's fun. It's the only thing I can say is that there's, like, this is lost in New York City, which is a great concept for a little kid. But there seems to be a lot of English people in this movie from England. You got the Tim Curry, who plays the, the hotel concierge. You got the woman who's also English. Even the, the misfit uh, woman with the birds, who has all the birds and nobody wants to talk to in Central Park, is English, too. I thought we were in New York City here. Why is everybody English in New York City? And of course, that it wouldn't be a movie because it's a movie, but at the end, the third act little kind of run when he does the same shenanigans to, uh, to Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern, where they all kind of like does these little like things and they all fall on their face and we all laugh for the last 20 minutes of the, uh, the film when he saves the criminals one more time. But he's almost like a vigilante because he gets the criminals, but he, nobody knows that he's the one who did it. But at the same time, all, he takes the picture and all of a sudden all he had to do was take, go to the cops and say, hey cops, he's the ones who are stealing the, the toy store, here's the picture. And then that would be the end of the movie. But of course it wouldn't be a movie until you have all these shenanigans take place. Which really he doesn't need to do because he already has the evidence in the first place. But that's what makes Home Alone 2 Home Alone 2. I love this movie. That's my review.